Hello and welcome to our Wednesday class. Very excited Hello. to be back on again. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, this will be another awesome and exciting uh, class. We get a lot of participation. Participation. Um, and uh, one quick thing before uh, we get started. If you're not actively speaking, can you please mute your phone um, when you have something to ask or when you want to um, say something? Just take it off mute. Once the lesson, I'm talking about once the lesson starts. Um, that way, all the background noise and everything is uh, not on the recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. 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 Hello. Long. Hello, hello. Shalom, shalom. All right. All right, so I'm going to get, go ahead and pass it over to Leonard. Okay, y'all. Uh, what, what, what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I brought up in the last class, I was getting some uh, uh, comparison and contrast with the Book of Enoch and uh, with, with uh, Jesus Christ and the New Testament. And so I want to go back and, because I had said that, uh, he that, that Enoch spoke in parables, and, and we know that in the New Testament they got they have Jesus, uh, the Christ, speaking in uh, parables, and then Enoch also spoke in woes. A lot of people don't know that, but he spoke in woes too. So I want to show you that before uh, uh, I close out that class, and I'm gonna start on uh, our class of the day, which is uh, the House of David, and it's, it's connection to uh, Israel and the end times. So the parables, uh, if you go to uh, Enoch chapter 37, the book of Enoch chapter 37 uh, and verse 7, it, it speaks of, it says, uh, I'm going to start at verse 6. So according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits, by whom the light of the eternal life has been given to me. Now, three parables were imparted to me. Enoch talking, and I lifted up my voice and recounted them to those that dwell on the earth. So we see that he's speaking, he's speaking in parables. Uh, this is where they get it from. So uh, you go to uh, go to uh, the chapter 45 of, of Enoch, and you'll see where uh, it's uh, the second parable. Uh, for the key, say, and this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of, of, of the dwelling of the Holy One and the Lord of Spirit. And into heaven they shall not ascend, and on earth they shall not come. You know, so you can read that on your own time. I'm just, I'm just giving you the, uh, what, what you can find it in, in the book of Amos. And uh, got one more. Uh, chapter 58. It says, verse 1. And I became, and I began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and the elect. Blessed are ye, ye righteous and elect, for glorious shall, your, your, shall be your life, and the righteous shall be the light of the sun, and the elect in the light of eternal life. The days of their life shall be unending, and the days of the holy of the holy without number, and they shall seek the light and find righteousness in the Lord of Spirit. So, so that, that that's the parable. Now I want to show you the woes. That's in uh, the world is in Enoch 96. So you remember what Jesus, the world was Jesus, you know, in the, in the New Testament. Somebody's making a lot of noise in the uh, in the background. Ninety six. Uh, I'm at ninety six. I'm starting at verse uh, fifteen. But the woes is in uh, uh, 16 through 25. So I'm starting at uh, 15. And this fact shall be a testimony against you for the memorial of your evil deeds. Woe to you who devour the finest of the wheat and drink wine in large bowls and trade under the foot of the lowly with your, with your, your might. Woe to you who drink water from every fountain. For suddenly shall ye be consumed and withered away because ye have forsaken the fountain of life. Woe to you who work unrighteousness and deceit and blasphemy. It shall be a memorial against you for evil. Woe to you 
the mic. So we see right here, mm -hmm. you, you see, same, uh, <laughs> same uh, plot. They have the the Enos, uh, was given the Enos, they, they took it over and, gave, and put it on, on Jesus Christ, and then they took the book of Enos out. They don't want you to read that. So, uh, you know, you can you can read that on your own time uh, and, and, and do, you know, do some comparison and contrast. So I'm gonna close that out, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna start the. Uh, well, anybody have any questions for us? Close it out. No questions. Okay, I'm gonna go to uh to the, to, to the lesson for the day, which is uh the house of David and its connection to Israel and the end times. So I'm gonna start out with uh. With the covenant that the most I have with David, which is in uh, Second Samuel, chapter seven. So what happened is uh, I'm not to give you a little background history on. This. So what what happened? What happened is uh, David had became king. He had overcame all all that Saul was trying to do to him and became king of Israel. And uh, he was sitting in his house that they had built for him. And he was looking out. Uh, and he, Nathan was with him. And he asked him, uh, you know, I got this house. And uh, I'm living here. I'm living I'm living good. So where's the house that, for the Lord? So he wanted. He had a design in his heart and a zeal to build a house for the Lord. So uh, Nathan told him in verse chapter 7, verse 3, uh, to, to uh, uh, go and build a uh, you know, do all that's in his heart. I'm going to read. Verse 3 says, And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that's in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. But, but uh, Nathan ain't uh, authorized to do that, because he, he had to first seek, go seek the Lord and, and inquire of the Lord and see what he say about it, then return and tell David. So uh, we pick it up in verse 4. We see that the Lord came and, uh, and checked uh, Nathan on what he had said. And gave him and told him what he wanted it to tell, what he really wanted him to tell David. So I'm gonna start out in verse four. And it came to pass that night, the same night he told David that, that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, Shall I build me a house for me to dwell in, whereas I have dwelt in, a, in, a, in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the and all the places where I have walked, with all the children of Israel spake I a word with any of the church tribe of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye me a house of cedar? Now therefore shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I have took thee from a sheep coat to follow sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel. And I was with thee with whithersoever thou went, and I cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. And have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that, that are in the earth. The more I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Now he go to you know, now what I'm about to read now is the covenant that he made with David, which is an eternal covenant. Uh, it's forever. And so he, so he says in verse 11, And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and I called thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And when thy days fulfilled, and thou shalt speak with thy father, I will set up thy seed after thee, who shall proceed out of thy bow, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father. He shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chastise him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house, talk about David's house, thine house and thy kingdom. See that? It's only one kingdom. David, it's David's kingdom. And it's one house, David's house, shall be established forever before thee. The throne and thy throne shall be established forever. So that's the covenant that he had with David. And so when you understand that, uh, 
David ruled for 40 years in Israel, and then he passed away. And so every king after that is out of David's loins. So that's David's house. That's what he means when he said the house of David. All the kings that, that you see in 1st and 2nd Chronicles, in 1st and 2nd Kings, they are descendants of David. They came out of David's loins. And there's a reason for that because he had a covenant with David that he's going to always have a, a king on the throne that's out of David's lineage. If, it, if, it, if any other king is placed on the throne, then it's a breach. It's a breach in Israel. If, if any other king is on there and he's not out of the seat of David, then it's a breach in Israel and it's a problem. Okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going to give some examples. Oh. Uh, so, and the first one was, I'm going to go back where I was, I was reading that, and uh, David wanted to build a most high house, but he, but he told David that he, David had blood on his hands because of, you know, all, all you know, he had, he had to bring forth judgment, and he had to cleanse the land and, and, and prepare everything so he couldn't build a house. So he told him when he passed away, uh, verse 12, I'm going to read it again. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy father, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And he, and he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. That's Solomon. That's Solomon. You're talking about Solomon right there. So right there at the gate, we see that he's, uh, he's abiding by the covenant that he, and the promises that he told David. So immediately after David passed, Solomon took the throne, just like he just he just said it right there. So, I wanted, so what I want to do now is shed a light on a few things because of what they did was I, t- I, t- I was explaining in uh, uh, my a few of the videos uh, that's on the channel, like uh, this um, David, who is the Messiah of Israel. I, I showed you who that was, and then I showed you uh, that uh, how you get a Messiah. And so I'm going to show you right here where they just, at the council, at the council near here, and uh, the, the, the Edomites and the Greeks, uh, when they created Jesus, then they came back and placed him and, and stuck him in the places where uh, where David David was at, and where, where Michael was at, and where David's seed was at. And they took scriptures and plucked them out and made you think that they was that it was him, but it's not him. And so I'm gonna give you some examples right here. Okay, I mean. Uh, uh, Isaiah 9 and verse 6. You know, I'm, uh, I know everybody in, out there in, uh, in the Hebrew land and Christian land know, know this verse. So, so uh, uh, Isaiah, let me find it. Isaiah uh Nine and six, let me see. Yeah, nine and six, I'm going to read it. It's nine uh, verses one through six. It says, Nevertheless, the dimness shall, shall not be such as it was in, in her vexation. In the first, he, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Natili, and afterwards did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. In Jubilee of the uh, nations, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of shadow of darkness, upon them have a light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. Thy joy before thy they joy, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast spoken, thou hast broken the yoke of the burden and the staff of the shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the days of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be the burning and the fuel of the fire. For under us a child is born, under us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. 
So I'm going to break this down. So we know in, in 2 Samuel that the Most High has a covenant with David that he's always going to have a seed. Uh, he's going to bring a righteous seed. Upon, uh, Israel go, will go off and uh, start sinning against him. He will always bring a righteous seed out of David's lineage up and, and, and bring Israel back. He'll, bring, he'll raise up a reformer uh, out of David's seed and to bring Israel back to him. So if you go back with that understanding, go to Isaiah chapter 1. Okay, now now in Isaiah chapter 1, we, we're going to see that Isaiah uh, lived. He, he lived a long time. He was called a, a silver tongue prophet. That's because he lived, uh, his, his lifespan spanned over the time of four kings that ruled in Israel. And and, I'm, and first one, I'm going to tell you who they are. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzzah, that's one, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So this is when he ruled. He ruled through all these kings. So now, uh, let's go back. We know that... Uh, that uh, Uzi was wicked, and Jotham was wicked, and Ahaz was wicked. But we know that Hezekiah was righteous. So you got three kings that, that, that uh, Israel went and went away from the Lord, but all these kings are Baal worshippers. If you go back and look in the first and second kings and first and second chronicles and look at these kings, you, you'll see that they was wicked. He's going to tell you that they was wicked. And then so... Let me go back there. Let me read it to you. Let me see. Let me show you like this. Let me find it right here. Mm-hmm. This is in second. Um, yeah, you're gonna find it while we keep going. So, so, so we see that these uh, that these kings are wicked. Now, when you come back to verse, uh, so you understand that uh, Uzi, Jackson, and Ahab is wicked. Now, you come back to uh, back to chapter nine. And I'm, oh, I'm in chapter 8. And you think, then I'm going to start with uh, verse 20. This, this is at the end of Ahaz's uh, reign. Right? We're at the end of Ahaz's reign, which is he's wicked. And he, his, his father was wicked and his grandfather was wicked. So I'm going to start at verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak or not according to his word, it's because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be fed and hungry, and it shall come to pass. And when they shall be hungry, they shall fat themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness and dimness of anguish. And they shall be driven into darkness. So they in, they, they, they in total darkness because they didn't have three wicked kings. And so now we know that Moses had a promise with David that he's going to bring a righteous king. Well, we see three of them was wicked. Now we see eight. Um, the cow is being getting ready to rule, but Ahab, uh, Ahab was killed. So now the cow is going to take its place. So I'm going to start at verse chapter nine, verse one. I'm going to read it again with the, with the proper understanding. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in the vexation when the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterwards did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walk in darkness, they in darkness. The three kings that can rule that that's bear worship and have seen not they say not in darkness have seen a great light. They have dwelled in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. It's help the God come. Say thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. Uh, they joy before thee according to the joy of the harvest. And as a man rejoices when the, when they divide the spoil, for thou hast broken the, the yoke of his burden. And the, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressors, as in the days of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be the burning uh, uh, and the fuel of the fire. For unto us a child is born. He's talking about Ezekiah. Unto us a son is given. The covenant we got with David. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of increase of his government shall peace shall, and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment 
and with justice from henceforth, even and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So who is the Lord of hosts? But if you go back and look at the, uh, the video, my video on, my, on the channel, we, we know that the Lord of hosts is Michael, and he's inherited Israel. So he's the one that got the covenant with David. He chose David. He had Nathan to, to anoint David and pour all on him and say, and he told him that you have, uh, I, I chose me a Messiah, which is David. And so he right here in, in verse 7, the, the last sentence telling you that the zeal of the Lord and hope performed it. He's performing what we just read in 2 Samuel, the covenant, the other day. There's three wicked kings that can reign during the time of Hezekiah, and at, at the end of Hezekiah's life, the Most High bring forth Hezekiah. That's what chapter 9, verse 1 through 6 is telling you. It, don't have, it has nothing to do with the New Testament, and nothing to do with J.C. or your house shot. That's Hezekiah. Uh, so I'm going to let, let uh, Kevin read those off uh, where it says those kings are wicked. Uh, Uzi. What, what, All right, got? so I'm going to start with uh, Hosea. Um, this is uh, 2 Kings 15, uh, 1 through 5. And it says, In the 20th and 7th year of Jeroboam, Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, son of Amazah, king of Judah, to reign. Yeah, that's him. It's for, they, they, in my Bible, they got it pronounced a little. Mm-hmm. It's Uzi. Got to go keep going. Find Ahaz. Yeah, this is it. I found Ahaz. Right. This yeah, is, he comes Ahaz, right after they, him. They, they ain't succession. Yeah, they ain't succession. Right. He's first, and then Ahaz is after him. No, Uzi is first. Uzi, and Uzi had Jotkin. And Jotkin had Ahaz. That's it. Jotkin was right after him, and then Ahaz. Well, they okay. just felt his name was different than Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so it says in this, um, verse 2, 17 years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and 50 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jecoliah of Jerusalem, and he did that which, now watch how trick, look, watch, watch the trickery, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father uh, Amaziah had done. Save that the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burnt incense still in the high places. And here's what happened because of that. And the Lord smote the king so that he was a leper unto the day of his death and dwelt in, in a uh, several house. And uh, Jotham, the king's son, was over the house judging the people of the land. So that's the first one, Hosea. Second one, it's... Um, 15:32 to 35. It says, In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remelikah, king of Israel, began Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerushiah, the daughter of Zadok. And he did, did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and he did according to all that his father Hosea had done. Howbeit the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burnt incense, still in the high places he built he built the higher gates of the house of the Lord. So they're saying he did that with, which was right, but they still burning and sacrificing to devils. So the next king is um, chapter sixteen and two. And it says um, 20 years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, his God, like David his father. But he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. So that's the three kings. Who did wickedness? Yeah, they worshiping other gods. They were born in the high places, and they worshiping other gods. So, so they didn't lay Israel uh, off. They off. They off, and they are in a dark place, just like we just read. And, and so now, the next king that's coming is uh, that the Most High bring forth because he has a covenant with David. Is Hezekiah, and that's that's right, what right, chapter nine right. is telling you. That's Hezekiah that he bring forth. So, so I'm gonna give you another example. Uh, uh, go to 
Second uh, King, chapter eleven. This is I don't know if I don't know if people know about this story, but it's a it's a woman that ruled in uh in uh Judah in Israel for for, for a brief period, and uh, what she did was uh, the Most High got a covenant with David that he always gonna have a seed out his lineage, right? So I'm in, I'm in chapter uh, Second Kings chapter eleven verse one, and what what had happened was that uh, they had killed this this woman Adela. They killed her son. So she got mad because they killed her, her son. So she turned around to destroy all the all the seed uh, royal that was coming that came forth from uh, from her son. She tried to kill all of them because she didn't want nobody she didn't want nobody else from David's lineage to rule on the throne. So I'm gonna start at chapter 11, verse one. And when Adlai, the mother of Ahaz, that's that's the son that was reigning that they killed, saw that her son was dead. She arose and destroyed all the seed royal, right? So she's trying to kill all the descendants of David that's left. She's trying to kill all of them, uh, her son's children. And so we know that the most, Michael got a company with David that he's going to always keep one. So let's look at verse 2. But Je- Jehoshaphat, Je- Jehoshaphat, I can't say her name, the daughter of the king of Jerusalem, sister of Ahab, took jo- Joash, the son of Ahab, that's one of his sea royal, and stole him from among the king's sons which were slain, and they hid him, even him and his nurse in the, in the bedchamber from Adler, so she, so that, she, that, that, that he was not slain, and he was with her, he in the, in the house of the Lord, six years, and Adler did reign over, over the land, so see, she started reigning, she reigned in Israel, so she reigned, now let's go to, uh, so they hid the boy, he was, he was, uh, he, he was, he was hidden, uh, right there in her eye, right under her nose, and they was raising him and taking care of him. And so now we're going to go to verse 10, uh, chapter 11. It says, and, and, and to the captains, and to the captains over 100 did the priests give uh, King David's spear and shield that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood, every man with his uh, weapon in his hand, round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along with the altar and the, and the, and the temple. And say, and he brought forth the king's son. So remember, unto us the son is given. The government is upon his shoulder. That's the covenant. It's always the son given from David. So that's, this is what they're doing right here. They got to restore the order that the Most High have in place. So 12 says, and he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him. See that? And, and, and they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. And when Adler heard the noise of the guards and, and of the people, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by the pillar as the manner was, and the princes and the trumpeters and the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with the trumpet. And Adler rent her clothes and cried, treason, treason. But Jodiah, the, 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 the priest came, Jedediah the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds and the officers of the host and said unto them, have her uh, forth without the, the rain, and him that him that uh, followed her killed with the sword. For the priest had, had said, "Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord." So see, so it was so it was rectified. The, it was a breach. She caused the breach in Israel by uh, trying to rain, and she was not a lineage of David. So he, he had his son hid away until the proper time, and then they came out, killed her, and they put him on the throne. They took away the breach that, that she had caused. Okay? Anybody got any questions? Hello? Hello? Yeah, no, yeah, no questions. So, you, did you understand that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you another example of, of when, I say, when I talk about a breach. So with now, now you see that uh, you want, if you want Israel to, to, to go in disarray and be confused and, 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 and confusing the faith, they want the king. They got to they gotta come in. They're going to try to get rid of the king that's on the throne out of days of lineage. That's how you call the breach. So go to uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 7. 
in verse 1, and then we're going to read it, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It says, this is dealing with Ahab. And we, we know the Ahab was wicked. This is right before Hezekiah came on the throne. He said, it came to pass in the, in, in the days of Hezekiah, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzi, king of Judah. Now, check it out. That Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekan, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, or this king over the ten tribes, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, uh, but could not prevail against it. And he was told the house of David. See that? Told Ahaz a- a- is out the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the woods, are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now, meet Ahaz, thou and Shephardah, thy son, and the, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed, and be quiet, fear not, neither be a faint-hearted, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and the son of Ramalia, because, now look what they're trying to do, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have taken evil counsel against these, saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it. So what they mean by vex it? And let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst, even the son of Tebow. So they want to take Ahab off the throne and put this dude right here, Tebow, Tebow on there. So, so they trying to, so, so we know that's not going to happen because the Most High got a covenant with David. He's going to have a son out of his lineage on the throne. So we're going to keep reading. Now, keep in mind that this, this is a verse that tells you that uh, chapter uh, 7, verse 14, said that's J.C. I'm going to read 14. Therefore, I know everybody knows this verse. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. That's, they say that's JC. But we see from, from the verse of uh, verse, uh, seven, nine verses, it ain't got nothing to do with Je- Jesus. It ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Let me break it down. I'm back at verse 10. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Ahab. Ahab is out of David's house. He's a lineage out of David's lineage. He's on the throne. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask either in depth or in height above. But Ahab said, I will not ask. Neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. It is a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye uh, weary my God also? Now, I'm going to read 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Right? Not J.C., but Emmanuel. So, if you go back to verse 3. Uh, chapter 7, verse 3, you're going to see that uh, it's, uh, he tells Isaiah, the prophet, uh, verse 3 says, Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, right, Go forth now and meet Ahaz, thou, and shesh the, the job. Well, this, this, uh, that's one of Isaiah's sons. Right there, that's one of Isaiah's sons. And he tells him, Take your, this, your son and go to the end, in, the end of the Kedua upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field and say to him, to Ahaz, so he got his son with him, right? And then we get to verse 14. He says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, right? Keep going. Verse 15. You're going to see it's not J.C. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child, look at this, before the child shall know to refuse the evil, and choose the good, the land that thou abhorred shall be forsaken of both the kings. And so you ask, ask yourself, what kings? Verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzi, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, that's one, and Pekan, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against him. That's the two kings. So he's telling him, this boy Emmanuel, before he get old enough to know the difference in evil and good, he's going to be the most high going to be the knock off these two kings. This ain't got nothing to do with the New Testament. So, 17, the Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house, David's house, days that have not come, for the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Syria. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hit 
for the fly that is in the upper, most parts of the river of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. That's these two kings. So I'm going to jump forward. I'm back to verse 14. He says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and, and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He's talking about Isaiah. Isaiah is a sign. So a, we saw Isaiah had one son in verse 3. Now, now we're going to go to verse chapter 8. Moreover, 8 and 1. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning Meha. Well, that's his other son. So we see what, that's three sons. Isaiah got. We got Emmanuel, this, this boy right here, and the one in verse 3. Then now, now he, he told them he's going to give Ahab a sign. Now here goes the sign. Verse 2. And I took unto me a faithful witness. See? He just told me you're going to give him a sign and you're going to have a son. He said, I took unto me a, a faithful witness to record Uriah, the priest, and Zechariah, the son of uh, Zechariah. And I went unto the prophetess. He go to the woman he talked about. That's his wife. And she conceived and bore a son. That's the son he talking about in 14. Then said the Lord unto me, call his name. There you go. My, my, that's the three boys. That's his three sons right there. None, now one of my name, J.C. Jesus. So verse 18 says, this Isaiah talking. Behold, I and the children. What children? The three I just showed you. I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts, Michael, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Yahweh dwell in the heavens of heaven. This is the Lord of hosts. Michael, he dwells on Mount Zion. Two different enemies. Any questions? Any questions? You're breaking it down. Okay. So, so and now he got another breach. So, so what, you, what, you, what you're learning is that these people can't rest unless they, get, unless they disrupt what the most high has set in place. They're trying to get rid of David's lineage out of Jerusalem. We see right here. They went up. They were trying to get rid of Ahaz right here. Now let's go to Second Chronicles, chapter 36. This, this, is, this is after, uh, this is when Nebuchadnezzar came and, uh, and they, they burned the temple down and, they, and Josiah just died. And Josiah was a righteous king. He just died. So I'm at verse um, I'm going to start at verse 9. Okay? And so at, at this time uh, well, we go to 36 and 1. Josiah just died, and his son, his son Jehovah, Jeho- took his place. Then the people of the land took Jehovah, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. I might not be saying these names right. Je- Jehovah was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt put him down. See, they, they constantly trying to put a breach in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Israel, take away the king out of that out of David's lineage. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem and condemned the land in a hundred talents of silver and, and condemned the land in a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Elohim, his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem and turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoiada, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. See, now this is this is the rightful seed that's supposed to be on the throne with this guy, Jehovah. They took him down, put his brother up there, took him to Egypt. Now we're going to keep going. Joachim was 20 and 5 years old when he, when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil. See, he's wicked in, in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and bound him in feathers and carried him to Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar also carried a carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now, the rest of the acts of Joachim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the books of the kings of Israel and Judah. And, and Joachim jo- jo- 
his son reigned in his stead. And Joachim was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the year was expired, the king of Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with, with goodly vessels of the house of the Lord and made Zedekiah his brother king over there. So see, they constantly usurping the they constantly trying to usurp and put a breach in the uh, in the kingship out of David. They constantly trying to remove that seed that the Most High got there from David. But nobody seems to know that. But that's what they constantly trying to do. That's why we're in the predicament we're in today. Because we don't have no no king from David's lineage, no high priest, uh, and we're not even in our land. And that's the breach in the womb that's been laid under us to, to this day. But thank God that the most I got a, got a, uh, uh, he got a promise with David that he was going to return David uh, to his own throne. So let me read that. It's uh, Psalm 132. And so, so what I'm doing is I'm showing you how important David is to Israel and how important the house of David is to Israel. And now we we proceeding to the, uh, the importance of, of that, that you have to tie David to the end time because the Most High promised him that he was going to bring him back and he's going to reign on his own throne. I'm in Psalms 132. Oh, and I'm going to start at verse uh, uh, 17 and 18. Well, I'm going to start at 15. Uh, I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will sanctif- uh, satisfy her poor with bread. I will also close her priest. Jeanette Johnson. I, I, I will close her priest with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David, that's, da- that's the, uh, the house of David, to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointing. David is the anointed one. 18. His enemies will I close with shame, but upon, upon himself shall his crown flourish. So we're going to return David to his own throne. See that? Yeah. So we're going to return David to his own throne. So now now what I want to do is I want to, once I shine, shine a light on that, I want to show you all through here uh, with these verses that that's, that's just the fact. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm in the popular books. I mean, you have, you have your popular book, cool, but if you don't, I'm going to read the verse. It says, uh, I'm in the uh, second answer, chapter 12. I mean, you probably haven't heard this before, but I'm, I'm going to share light on it tonight. Uh, you have, nobody probably never read it to you. Uh, so, as we had a dream, you know, and, uh, a vision. He says, I'm at, I'm at uh, chapter 12, verse 13. Saying, it came, and it came about after seven days that in the night I dreamed a dream, and behold, a wind arose from the sea, so that it stirred up all the waves. And I looked, and behold, the, the, the wind uh, brought out the heart of the sea, something like the figure of a man. And this man flew with the clouds of heaven. And, which, uh, and wherever he turned his face and looked, everything that was seen by him trembled. And wherever the voice went went from his mouth, all who heard his voice, all, all who heard his voice melted as wax melts when it fills the fire. And after that I looked, and behold, and a new multitude of men were, were gathered together from the four winds of heaven to make war upon the man who had come up out of the sea. And I looked, and behold, he called himself out of the great mountain and flew upon it. But I sought to see the region of the, or the place from which the mountain had been called, and I could not. And after that I looked, and behold, all who gathered themselves against him to fight him were much afraid, for dad to fight. And behold, when he saw the onslaught of the multitude that approached, he did not, he did not raise his hand or hold his sword or any weapon of war, but I saw only how... How uh, he said out of his mouth, how uh, he said out of his mouth what looked like a flood of fire, and out of his lips a uh, flaming breath, and from his tongue uh, he sent forth a, a storm of spark. They were all mixed together, the flood of fire, the flaming breath, and the mighty storm, 
and they fell upon the onset of the multitude which was ready to fight and burned them up, so that suddenly there was uh, nothing to be seen of the countless multitude but dust of their ashes and smell of smoke. And when I saw it, I was amazed. Afterward, I saw this man come down from the mountain and, and call to him another multitude that was peaceful. Then many people came to him, some joyful, some sorrowful, some in feathers, and some bringing arms. Now, what I want to, what I want to shed light on is the fact that you say, well, how you, how you figure that that's David? Well, let's go look at, uh, look at uh, Isaiah 66. Well, first of all, go to, go to Isaiah chapter 11. Then I'll go to Isaiah 66. Okay, I'm going to start reading uh, verse 1. It says, chapter 11 of Isaiah, verse 1. I'm going to uh, team to, to my punchline. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Uh, a, a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And, it sh- and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither uh, reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with, with the iniquity of the, of the meat of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. We just read that. We said not, not with a sword, but with his mouth. We just read that. So, but I'm going to show you who it is. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reign. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall, shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall leave them. None of this ain't happened yet. Say, and the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. We know that ain't happened yet. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand on a cockatrice beam. They shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters are covered the sea. Now here go my punchline. And in that day there shall be a root out of jet, which shall stand for an ensign to the people, and to, to it shall the Gentile see, and his rest shall be glorious. So my thing to you is to you is, who is Jesse? And Jesse is David's father. So the root out of Jesse is none other than David. So verse 10 is telling you, in that day, in the last days, there shall be a root out of Jesse. It's only one person. It's David, which shall stand. And right now, as we speak, David did. So he says, in that day, there shall be a root out of Jesse, which shall stand for the ensigns of the people, to it shall the Gentiles see. So we, we see it's David. Right? So let's go to Isaiah 66. And I'm starting at verse uh, 5. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that renders recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, we need to know who the she is. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. So, eight, who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such a thing? Shall the earth, they go to woman, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, see, we see that Zion and the earth is, is the woman. She brought forth her children. Well, who are her children? Well, that's all the people that was, born, was buried in Jerusalem, in graves, the sepulchre, that Joseph told them to take my bones from Egypt and bring them, bring them with you and bury them in Zion when, when, you, when you get there. This is the reason he said that. So, nine, shall I bring the birth and not the cause to bring forth, said the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shed the wounds, said the Lord? 
Rejoice, ye with Jerusalem. Be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may sup and be satisfied with the breath of her consolation, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. So that's all our forefathers standing there. Right? He didn't did resurrect them. So now let's go back to and look at look at verse six. Verse seven. He says, Before she travailed, before before all this happened, before he raised up all these people, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before a pain came, before a birth pain came, she was delivered of a man child. That's David. So before all this, before he done all this, he brought David out. Like, like Ezra just said, he saw a man come up out of the sea and flew to Zion and stood upon Zion and, 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 and the whole, all the earth came to, to war against him. Then Isaiah chapter 11 tells you that in that day shall a root out of Jesse stand for an sign. It's David. And so now I'm going to go to, to Ezekiel 37 and I'm going to kill it. Yeah, Ezekiel 37. So uh, I'm, I'm going to read 1 through uh, all the way to 10. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and as I prophesied there was a noise. And behold, it shaked me, and bone came together, bone to his bone. And when I had beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them from above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, say unto the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, and exceedingly great on. Then said, then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones is the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our part. So we see right here that this Israel, the whole house of Israel, just like Isaiah 66 just said. And verse 12 says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your grave, cause you to come up out of your grave, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your grave, O my people, and brought you up out of your grave. And I, and I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord. And I, I have spoken it, performed it, says the Lord. So we see that it's literal. Now let's go on to verse 22, and then I'm going to finish it off. Uh, and this, this is all through the Old Testament. I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detectable things, nor with any, any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of their dwelling places wherein they have sinned. And I will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. 24. And David, not Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shem, or Yahushua, and David, my servant, shall be the king over them, and they, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, where their fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David, shall be their prince forever. 
Yes, we don't need we don't even need to read that now. Any questions? Nah, that spells it out. Okay. You ain't got no yes. comments. No comments. Hey, Leonard, uh, Daniel chapter what, 12, uh, what is it, 9 or 12, it, it explains when they when he did that, when he appointed David as the king, right? What, what, what chapter? It's Daniel chapter 12, the first verse, I think. Yeah, well, that's Mike. Mike, yeah. Yeah, well, well yeah, that, that's, that's when he appoint he appoint David as the king, though. Right, right, right. right. Well, let, let me let me see let me let me make make, make it make it clear though. So he so uh, Daniel chapter twelve. Let me go there and look. So I want to I want to shine a light on something else. So it's a difference in the Redeemer and the Messiah. David is the Messiah, and we know that uh, where we, I'm going now, chapter twelve, verse one, we're gonna see we're gonna see what thus said the Lord. Not with not with uh the founding fathers. The Greek either might find the father said, but twelve verse one says, and at that time shall Michael, the archangel Michael stand up, the great prince who standeth for the children of, of our people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even at that same time, and at that time our people shall be delivered. So that's a synonym of deliverer, deliverer and redeemer. That's so we see Michael is the deliverer. Now let's go back right quick to uh, verse 23 in Ezekiel. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them. See, now we're going to see that this ain't David. But I will save them out of, their, out of all their dwelling places where they have sinned and, and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people. And I will be that God. See, we see that that's Michael. Now, 24. And David. See, they two. David is the Messiah. And the person that's doing this is the Lord of hosts, which is Michael. David ain't, the, David ain't the deliverer. David is the Messiah. The anointed one that was always pulled on in 2 Samuel 16 and 1. But the deliverer is doing is talking. Let me read it again. Neither shall they, this verse, Ezekiel 37, verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I, the Lord of hosts, will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people. We know that the most I gave him, Israel. He's the prince of Israel. And I will be that God. David ain't no God. 24. And David, my servant, just like he said in in, in um, First Samuel sixteen and one, when he said, "Go and pull and anoint him," I have found me a Messiah. Put all on. So there it is. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we could just we got some. We got a comment, uh, Kevin. Um, no, nah, I'm just taking taking good notes. Okay. So, uh, that was the house of David. Yeah, that was that was the uh, house of David. His connection with Israel and and the and the end time. I, I, how how they all um, go hand in hand with, with the proper understanding. So, any other questions? I got something. Can you uh, can you tie in Joel chapter um, two with that? Joel chapter two. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you mean? If, uh, first, what? How many verses? Well, if you if you go, I'm gonna start. Chapter uh, Joel chapter two verse one it says, "Blow ye a trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand." So we know that the day of the Lord, uh, when we when we was in our when we was in our Isaiah chapter eleven, he says, "In that day, that's, that's the day of the Lord." 
in, in Ezekiel uh, 37, it says, in that day, that's the day of the Lord. And so the signal that signals all that is the, when the trumpet is blown in Zion. That's what triggered the whole thing. And so it says, blow your trumpet in Zion and sound, and we know that Ezekiel 37 is literal. It's, it ain't, it's, not, it's not metaphoric and none of that. It's literal. He's, he's going to raise up um, our forefathers out of their grave. And they're gonna they're gonna live again. They're gonna resurrect them. They already knew they gonna, this is gonna happen long before the New Testament. So uh, Joel chapter two verse one: Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountain. A great people, a strong. There have not been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it, even the years of many generations. This is the army that we just read about in, in Ezekiel 37, verse 11. He says this is a seemingly great army. This him, this him right here. The trumpet did blow. Three, a fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burner, and the land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them uh, a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. See, this, this judgment, this is the judgment that everybody talking about that's going to come upon the earth. That Daniel talked about me when he says, at the end of the fourth beast, the saints of the Most High are going to take the kingdom. The saints is, uh, is, is somebody that was once, at one time, they were dead. Yeah, at one time, they were alive. Yeah, at one time, they were alive, but they died, but they even read, they read, that's, what, that's what a saint is. So that's Ezekiel 37, verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of a chariot on top of a mountain shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble. As the strong people set in the battle array, before their faces the people shall be much pain, and all faces shall get, uh, gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the walls like men of war, and they shall march everyone in his own way. See, now we know this is the army. I'm going to read it again. They shall run like mighty men, and they shall climb the walls like men of war, and they shall march as an army, everyone on his own way, and they shall not break their rank. It's an army. Neither shall one thrust any another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. See that? They shall run to and fro in the city. What city? Jerusalem, Zion. They shall run up upon, upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. And the earth shall quake before them. And the heavens shall tremble. And the sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars, and the stars shall withdraw their shine. See, now what, 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 you, what you need to know is that, you see, the sun and the moon going to get dark, but it ain't called J.C. Right, that's in Revelation. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get dark because he's, he's on me. Uh, their judgment is here. And so, let me give you a couple more verses that, that found on this. Uh, so, we see that Ezekiel 37 is literal. Now, let's go to. Uh, so, the most I said that after, after the flood, in uh, Noah's flood, he said he's never going to flood, never going to judge the earth again with war. He said he's going to judge it with fire the next time. So, let's look at. Uh, uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 <laughs> See, that, uh, uh, chapter 4 of Malachi verse 1 but behold the day same day we just talked about the day of the Lord uh, uh, the day coming that shall burn as an oven a fire, and all the power, yea, all that do it wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So why is he saying it's going to burn them up? Well, go to Zechariah. Chapter 10. Chapter 12, my bad. Chapter 12. I'm going to 
Lord. Verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, said the, said the Lord, which are stretched forth the heavens and lay up the foundation of the earth and formed the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about when they shall be in siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day, the day of the Lord, last day, when I will make Jerusalem a burden stone for all people, all burdening themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though the people of the uh, earth be gathered together against it. Uh, in that day, said the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes uh, upon the house of Judah, and I will smite every horse uh, of the people with blindness, and the government, that were the kings, same the kings, and the kings of Judah. Well, ain't no kings now, so he's the king from past. He's the past king that he done, he done raised up. The governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my faith. In the Lord of hosts, their God. In that day I will make the governor, that's the king of Judah, like a heap of fire. See that? That's why he's saying in Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, uh, uh, the earth shall burn like an oven. In that day I will make the governor of Judah like a heap of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in the sheep. And they shall devour. We just read that. They shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord also shall save the kids of Judah, uh, that the house, that the glory of the house of David, they go to the house of David, and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day, said the Lord, uh, in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. Now check this out. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. See that? That's why he's saying that in Malachi. When he when he resurrected them, they don't, they got they got resurrected, they got bodies like the angels did. And we know that the angels was formed out of fire. So this this is we this so we see that that's literal. And David is over them. Okay, so uh I think that explained it. So um we got like about 25 minutes left, and uh, we're just going to go into uh, uh, question and uh, Q&A. If uh, you, you got a question pertaining to what we just uh, went over, or you got another question, we're, gonna, we're just going to uh, uh, deal with each question as they come. All right, and if anybody don't have anything, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.